Welcome back. Today is a very exciting day because we have this solid bar of magnesium to play with. It's a metal that I've never experimented with, and I want to find out, among other things, can you forge this crazy light material? First impressions visually are, of course, that it is a gray metal that's picked up a little bit of an oxide. What do you mean to gray metal? What metal isn't gray? What would you say if you looked at this bar of steel? You would say, wow, that's a shiny metal. Gray. Shiny gray. Shiny. This is aluminium, and much like aluminium, it picks up a surface oxide here at room temperature, making it look that little bit dull. But of course, the most pressing thing about magnesium is how crazy light it is. Really, I should say how little density it has. This whole bar only weighs 1.28 kilos, 2.8 pounds. And if I pick up an identically sized bit of steel, you'll see the steel is four and a half times heavier. 5.6 kilos, 12.3 pounds. And so because we have a block of tungsten from trying to forge it, we now have some really weird mind games that we can play. Come on, Jamie, pick up the magnesium. Whoa, it's so light. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a baton that you'd use in like a running relay. It's that light. It's kind of crazy. If I wanted a bit of steel that weighed the same as this, it would look that big. And when you cut off a short little section of magnesium, it basically might as well be a baseball or a cricket ball. It is so light. Catch that, Jamie. Look at that. Hilarious. We've got two different alloys of magnesium. Electron WE54 and ZK60A. So we can see if there are any differences. For now, let's start with the hand tools. What can we do with it? I'm assuming it's dead soft, right? I think so. Just kind of like holding it and moving it around and listening to it. I think it's going to be quite comparable to a block of aluminium. I mean, there must be a correlation between the density of something and how hard it can be, surely. I am not a scientist, but I don't think it's necessarily the case. But you would think that because of the atoms that make something dense, something light has less atoms and therefore is easier to cut, is less to move. Maybe we will have to find out in the comments below because neither of us are scientists. Here's the chainsaw file. Oh yeah. Plenty soft. Made a good little effect there in no time. Let's compare that to aluminium. I will actually say that aluminium is getting bit more by the file. Feels like we're taking off more material than on the magnesium. Let's try the other alloy. That feels identical. My verdict on filing is that the two alloys of magnesium are nearly identical, but they are both just a little bit harder to cut than the aluminium. Now, if we break out a hacksaw, very easy to cut with a hacksaw still. But one of the things that I think is quite cool about aluminium is aluminium can be cut with wood tools. This is a wood panel saw making a pretty good effort at cutting this aluminium bar. Question is, can a wood saw also cut magnesium? Look at that! That is so cool. <laughs> What's weird, the file cut the magnesium worse than the file cut the aluminium, but the wood saw is cutting the magnesium better than the wood saw cut the aluminium. Things that don't make sense. Next question, machining. It's going to be a no-brainer, right? I'm just going to clean out the uh, lathe of other chips, though. Why? We'll get to that. Let's have a look. The fact that it can be cut so well with hand tools definitely shows you this is a material that you can really efficiently make stuff from. Big heavy cut on the end. Let's see how it turns. Wow! Beautiful! But what I want isn't those tiny chips. I want big long swarf. Didn't get the long swarf, but it just cuts like butter. There we go. That's the chip I want. It can obviously be machined in the mill if it cuts like that. No sparks! Really easy to grind, but no sparks. It's basically like grinding a stick of warm butter, let's be honest. Clearly, magnesium is a beautiful metal to make things from because of how easily you can work it. But we're about to find out why it is one of the most dangerous metals to have in your workshop. It burns at 3,100 degrees Celsius. It's one of the most reactive metals you, you could be working in your workshop. Just incredibly dangerous. And it doesn't take much heat for it to go. And once it goes, it's gonna be making one big fire very, very quickly. Woo! <laughs> that 
That's crazy. See how long that's burning for? It is absolutely crazy. And it is not easy to put out. In fact, my reading on the internet told me that when you've got a proper magnesium fire, you are kind of completely pruped and there's pretty much no way to put it out. I guess this being small enough, a little bit of water did the trick. Well, on that note, should we try and welding it? That'll be an interesting idea. I think TIG welding's gonna be the move with this. From my reading on Wikipedia, it turns out magnesium is also used medicinally as a laxative. So far in all this experimentation, I haven't shit myself. We will find out. Does welding magnesium make you shit yourself? I actually really need to go. What? Is it kicked in? Now, I don't personally use magnesium to loosen my stools, but I do use something to tighten my internet security, and that's NordVPN. I never, ever, ever log onto any Wi-Fi that isn't my own without being connected to NordVPN. As a virtual private network, they act as an intermediary between you and the websites you browse, encrypting the data that goes between you and their servers before it then goes onto the website. This is very important because people can set up spoof Wi-Fi networks where, sweet, awesome, it feels like you're browsing, but in fact, somebody is in the middle, it's a man in the middle attack, and they can see all the data that's passing back and forth, which could make it easier for them to steal your identity and steal all sorts of money. It would be bad. And by signing up to NordVPN, you're also going to get the most flexibility possible into your internet browsing experience because you can choose to connect to any of their 5,000 plus servers in 60 plus countries, meaning you can make the websites you're browsing think you're browsing from somewhere else. This can mean that you can get better deals on rental cars, hotels, you can find the shows to stream that you love that might not be available exactly where you are. One plan's good for up to six devices. It's risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And so please go to NordVPN dot com forward slash forge where every purchase of a two-year plan will receive an exclusive discount and four additional months for free check them out below let's get back to it well it definitely melts i wonder if it needs more amperage that was 116 amps let's see what happens if we send it oh yeah Whoa! holy crap Delightful mess. You can definitely make a puddle out of magnesium without it catching fire with the TIG welder. Next up, malleability. How about when it's cold? Damn, that was loud. Oh! Ooh, interesting though, look. A crack is starting to form around where it had some little TIG weld puddling. We got a break. Wow, very interesting. So it's malleability when cold isn't super good because though it's fairly soft, it does like to break. Cold under a 25 ton hydraulic press. Whoa, that's terrifying. Wow. Whoa. It's just so interesting to look at how that breaks. I've never seen anything break like that. The thing it broke off is so shiny. And now under the 80 kilo power hammer. Whoa! Your magnesium is a high performance metal. It's used in like racing cars and stuff now. One of its first industrial uses was World War One and World War Two in aeroplanes. The Germans actually used a lot of it and check this out. They called the alloy electron with a K, and Electron is still one of the names that they use for magnesium alloy. And despite its industrial uses and high performance uses, we see that it has limitations. So you can't have it all. You can't have a metal that's ultra super duper light and ultra super duper strong or ultra super duper malleable. There's just nothing quite like steel. I think we all know what our favorite metal is. Metallica. That's your favorite metal? Yeah, maybe Deftones. Interesting. It is now time to heat it up and forge it and see if it is any different. So this gas forge gets up to 1300 degrees Celsius, which is about three times as much as is required to set magnesium on fire. So of course we don't want to do that. Google says 290 to 400 degrees Celsius is somewhere about the forging range of magnesium. And considering the risk of burning down this entire business park, I think it would be prudent to stick within that range. And look at this. Alive from the dead, I have had this kiln, this beautiful Paragon heat treating oven, sitting under the steel rack for four years. And finally got somebody in to get it. Change a fuse. Yeah, it was, it, it, was, it, was just, it was just a fuse. This beautiful beast of an oven is now ready for us to use again. And the timing couldn't be better because I can now set the temperature and it's in Fahrenheit. 
Configuration, <laughs> <laughs> novice mode. Oh, oh, oh! Temperature, degrees Celsius. Guys, my dear American viewers, I love you very much. But unfortunately, though at one point in time I might have been bilingual with my temperature measurements, freedom height, Celsius, right now I think I'm completely incapable of understanding the Fahrenheit's. Well, it just doesn't make sense anyway, does it? Zero degrees is freezing. Yeah, that makes sense. What? What's that, 33 Fahrenheit? That doesn't even make sense. Yeah, yeah, people can make arguments about it. You can, you can go both ways. So let's start with 300 degrees Celsius. Boom, boom. <laughs> God, it's so cool. It's just so pretty. Right, the oven's hot. Let's see how this WE54 alloy magnesium goes. First heat with a hand hammer. It looks not glowing and looks no different. Wow, it's also hard as can be. That's incredibly hard. All right, 350 degrees Celsius. Let's see if it's any better. I mean, it's still very hard. This is not what I expected. I expected this to feel like aluminium. I should show you what aluminium looks like. Here's a trick for working out if aluminium's hot enough to forge. Take a bit of wood, not hot enough to forge. You'll see what I mean when it is. There we go, that tells you it's hot enough to forge when it chars. Forging aluminium is kind of like this. You can hear how it sounds. It just sounds soft. It doesn't bounce around on the anvil and it deforms really, really nicely. So I expected, I don't know, because in my simple brain, magnesium, aluminium, the end of the word is the same. They have a similar visual appearance and they're both quite light metals. For whatever reason, I thought they'd forge similarly. Back to the magnesium. It feels barely any different to how it felt when it was room temperature. So if I can't hit it with a hammer and make it deform, let's try it with the press. At the same 350 degrees Celsius. Nothing. What? 25 tons of force isn't doing a lick of anything to it. What if I hit an edge again? Oh! Fractured it again. Damn! Looks like somebody with an enormous set of teeth has just taken a bite out of it. Let's bump that temperature. Let's get it to 400. She's hot. Let's try the power hammer. Oh, it's better. That's better than it's been. It forged! I would call that forging. We got just the slightest rhombus and it instantly ripped it apart. Wow! Straight down the diagonal! Get some! That is a work of art. Where's my touch mark? That is one bloody temperamental material. Uh, it's possible that it was getting too cold, but what I definitely know is that we went from a nice square cross section to a rhombus and it only took a few blows from there for it to rip. So it could be a combination of it cooling down too much and the rhombus, or it could be just the rhombus, but that's really temperamental. What I wanna do now is try the other alloy that we have. It's this stuff right here, ZK60A. Our previous alloy, WE54, is called a casting alloy of magnesium. According to the internet, it is weldable by TIG welding and it maintains a lot of its strength up to 300 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty good in a higher temperature type of situation as compared to the ZK60A, which is described as being strong to 150 degrees Celsius, is not weldable and is called a wrought alloy of magnesium. Casting alloy, wrought alloy, something tells me that we're gonna have a better chance of success with this. Here we go. With the hand hammer. Still feels pretty hard. Way harder than the aluminium. It's gotta to go to the press. I had so much hope, it says wrought in the name. I mean, it, yeah, it's better. I think it's better. It hasn't split apart yet. I think it's better. I want to try upsetting it. Nothing. No way. It's just very hard. This at forging temperatures is even harder than steel at forging temperatures. And obviously, it's a much lower actual temperature, but still very surprising. There we go. That's 
good. Much better. I see. Oh, I think we have spawned another crack. That's no good. Oh, look at that. That's a very unique break. Just ripped apart in the very center of the bar. Again, on the diagonal relative to the square. It clearly has a very narrow forging window. And clearly it is ridiculously temperamental in that it fractures and rips apart very easily. We could forge on it for longer if we preheated the dies, that's for sure. Another thing I know for certain is that I never want anything to do with magnesium ever again. I think this is just a sucky material. Option one, it burns down your workshop. Option two, it breaks apart when you try to forge it. The only saving grace it has is its really remarkable machining characteristics. You can take on material really well on the lathe in the milling machine. What if you really need a poo? And that sums it up perfectly. If you need to loosen up your stools, maybe you need a little bit of magnesium too. At least that's what the internet says. Let us know in the comments down below what metals you want us to try forging and experimenting with next. Check this out. The steam hammer's obviously looking quite lonely without the receiver tank there. I wanted to let you know to hang tight for an update on when we get this thing plumbed up to steam because it's going to be a little while, but it's going to be spectacular. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.